Bitcoin has been around for 15 years now, and throughout that time, the narratives and use cases for Bitcoin have changed as well, from the cypherpunk movement to addressing and appealing to the libertarian mindset to, uh, you know, being an appeal to maybe criminals who think they can use it. And now as a store of value to hedge against rampant inflation that is happening around the world that's becoming more and more apparent to not just individuals, not just to corporations, but to countries as well. And throughout those narrative shifts, the acknowledgement of Bitcoin and its impact has changed through the eyes of government, or at least what they've told us is their opinion about Bitcoin from some thing that is should, it's it's going to die off in in any moment now to uh, it's only for criminals to use to well it could be a threat to the greater global financial system after events like the CFI contagion that happened in 2021 and the billions of dollars that were lost there so what is the next evolutionary step in bitcoin and what is the proof of this through the actions of recent institutions in the traditional financial world in the United States. This question is very important for everyone, for the masses, for those of you who do not like to include yourself as the masses, for those of you who own companies, for those of you who care about securing your wealth against the, the risks of the traditional financial system. This next evolutionary step of the narrative of Bitcoin is huge. And I'm, I'm going to be talking about a blog post from Arthur Hayes. Now this guy, now listen, you shouldn't be taking everything that anyone says as truth. Uh, it is opinions. For example, Arthur was famously, what, about a month ago, he was saying dump Solana, going all in on Ethereum. And now he's saying that Solana is going to hit the moon. But this recent blog post that he's published raises some really interesting insights that I didn't consider. And I'm willing to bet that most of you didn't either. And it's definitely worth a video. So what, we're, what Arthur brought to light is the fact of Bitcoin it's something that we're always talking about, how Bitcoin is a way to exit the system, to exit the traditional financial system, to step away from central banks, to step away from fiat currencies, to vote with your money by taking it out of that system and placing it, placing that value in a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network that does not enact in censorship and it provides immutability and mathematically proven honesty to this world. It's amazing. But what I was talking about before, how Bitcoin wasn't seen as a threat by governments or whatever, they want to downplay it, downplay it. What's that quote? First they ignore you, then they mock you, then they fight you, and then you win. Uh, well, they ignored it, they mocked it, and maybe they found out that they couldn't fight it. And so what they've done is created a loophole through these Bitcoin spot ETFs. You might have heard the phrase of the financialization of Bitcoin. Uh, it's paper Bitcoin. It's not real Bitcoin. That, that is absolutely true. If you're investing in an ETF, you're investing in an ETF, not in Bitcoin. I don't care if the ETF is represented by Bitcoin. It is not native Bitcoin. But before I get too off topic is the fact that I think Bitcoin has reached such a level of adoption where we have multiple countries considering it as legal tender, one successfully implementing it. We have huge uh companies and corporations putting Bitcoin on their books and finding a lot of success in doing so. And of course, you got to have more and more retail investors getting exposure to Bitcoin, being interested in it. Again, it's been around for 15 years. So it was if it was going to die, it would have died already. And if they could have fought it, if they could have brought it down, they would have. And now that we have BlackRock having passed a Bitcoin spot ETF, you know, a lot of people, myself included, and I still stand by this, is the fact that because BlackRock applied, it was going to get passed. Not the question shouldn't have ever been if it was going to get passed. The question should have been, why is BlackRock applying for a spot Bitcoin ETF? And the part the point that Arthur Hayes is saying in his blog post or this idea that he's reminding us all is that Bitcoin is an exit to that system. 
And if a mass exodus were to happen because that traditional financial system is in such a mess that if there was a legitimate outlet, an exit for people to go to, they would flood it. And so what they've done, they've approved this spot ETF through BlackRock. And it's like what Toby has been saying in videos since this past summer, how they've been doing their best to clear out their competition in terms of on ramps for cryptocurrencies. Uh, Coinbase has been attacked by the SEC. Kraken has tried to settle with the SEC, but they keep coming back with more and more lawsuits th from the SEC and from the IRS. Binance got washed out from the US. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to limit these exit points and they are marketing this Bitcoin ETF as real Bitcoin, except easier because you don't have to worry about storing it or dealing with, with any of that complicated stuff of cryptocurrency and that technology that you just know nothing about, they'll take care of it. And maybe you'll see some price increases and your portfolio will do well. In the meantime, what they're doing really is you're not, because you're not buying real Bitcoin, you're buying an ETF, an investment product of BlackRock's. You are essentially not exiting that traditional financial system. You're keeping your value in BlackRock and they don't have to worry about a mass exodus of value. And BlackRock gets to own a bunch of Bitcoin too because they can justify it because they have an ETF and it's a spot ETF. And the same goes for all of these other institutional players as well. So anyway, for me personally, reading that blog post from Arthur Hayes, it helped connect all of the dots for me. And it was it was definitely a blind spot. I'm sure many of you, maybe you can't admit it, but it probably was a blind spot for you as well. And so that's why they're going, you know, approval of Bitcoin, but it's not really Bitcoin. It's their version of Bitcoin. It's they're blocking off the exits. So if this video is too long, you didn't want to watch it, you want to skip to the end to get to the, the, the nuts and bolts of this video, buy real Bitcoin, hold it in self-custody and thank yourself in the years to come. If you want to know what Toby and I are getting into with our cryptocurrency investments, you want to view our own personal cryptocurrency portfolio, you got to check out learningcrypto.com, home of the CT Club. That's it for today. We'll see you later.